What's up everyone, it's Scotty with Money Vesting. So the market's really rolling off here and a uh, substantial sell-off across the board for all 11 sectors within the S&P 500. The markets were down, S&P was down a little bit over 1.79%, back under 4,000. The NASDAQ also selling off almost 2% trading a little bit lower at 11,200 and the Dow Jones dropping almost 500 points on the day. Surprising? Not really. This is something that we did talk about, um, you know, in one of our previous updates, you know, I specifically mentioned the title of that video was don't take the bait because of what the Federal Reserve is saying, because what they say and, and how the market sentiment shifts is completely a very sentimental driven market rally, a technical rally, which doesn't really tell us anything about the more macroeconomic unresolved environments that we currently are in with respect to inflation, with respect to interest rates, with respect to a lot of different things that are still going to be driving the markets moving forward. So uh, hope you guys are doing great. As always, make sure that you drop a like and of course, subscribe to the channel if you're just joining us for the first time. We talk a lot about fundamental analysis, technical analysis, macroeconomics and stocks and options as well. And the link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below if you're interested in joining. That is the second link down in the description below. There is a 16% discount still available. And of course, we'd love to have you on board. You'll get access to our trade alerts, buy and sell alerts, options alerts, uh, private videos, and of course, spreadsheets and documents for you to view as well as part of that and we also have our christmas sale for fundamental and technical analysis courses that's the bundle which is going to be 60 percent off again this is the biggest sale we've ever had and the coupon code is going to be christmas 60 if you want to take advantage of that and that will go away on december 26th after christmas this sale will be over so these are the earnings again nothing really on monday this is the economic calendar we did get some factory orders and ism services index which did come in hotter than what the expectations were and that once again fueling a little bit of uh concerns that the federal reserve will have to be more aggressive than what uh what the original plans were so dow sheds nearly 500 points stocks finished lower on worries of further fed rate hikes it's literally just my god it's just it, we just keep going back and forth in the same circle same vicious cycle of anticipation disappointment anticipation disappointment it's just the same story over and over again and the market's doing a really really bad job in reading the room it's just not able to get out of that vicious cycle it's like we get uh, some good set of data some good set of economic reports market starts anticipating a pivot we rally and then we start to kind of recontemplate. Then we start to, you know, really get disappointed that, look, it's not going to happen. Um, and then we start selling off once again. It's just like, what's going on? It's like over and over again, the same thing. Stocks fell Monday on fears that the Federal Reserve may continue tightening until it tips the economy into recession. <sighs> this is something I've heard, like read like a million times uh, in 2022. Like, how is the market getting this so wrong every single time? The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 482 points or 1.4%. Um, and of course, the test shares shed 6.4% on report of an output cut at its Shanghai factory, while tech stocks like Amazon, Netflix, like 3.3%, 2.4% respectively. Uh, Salesforce tumbled nearly 7.4% as it announced the departure of the Slack's CEO as well. Tesla, I'll do a more specific more dedicated video so i will be doing a separate video for them very soon uh and a hotter than expected reading on the november ism services further fueled concerns the federal reserve will continue hiking after the index topped dow jones estimates and increased for october um and bond yields pushed higher as equities fell with the yields on the benchmark 10-year uh trading up nearly nine basis points to three and a half percent um late monday as well and uh, Peter Essel, Senior Vice President of Investment Management and Research at the Commonwealth Financial Network, says, and I quote, clearly equity markets wants to move higher, but that's a very dependent on inflation getting under control. And so when you have the above expectation prints on any economic numbers that come out, that tends to fuel inflationary concerns, which sends rates higher once again and markets also lower. And this is what the markets lower looks like. Tesla down 6%, Amazon down 33 Home Depot, Lowe's, we got pretty much all sectors. I mean, there was only two names that were pushing higher all the day that had some momentum. That's Boeing and that's CME Group. Everything else just straight up down. Energy, real estate, industrials, technology, financials, banks, communication services, cyclicals, defenses, materials, industrials, everything. All sectors within the S&P 500 straight up down. This is what the one day looked like. 
all 11 sectors selling off. Over the last one month, though, we've got 10 out of 11 sectors pushing higher. Energy is the only one that's still struggling and it's down over the last one month. Uh, oil prices, palladium, gasoline, silver, soybean, copper, orange juice all pushing through with ethanol and cocoa dropping substantially. Bitcoin just hovering around 17,000, Ethereum hovering around 1250, $1,300 at the moment. So a pretty substantial drop and volatility got a decent amount of spike here up over 8.86%. So, you know, we did kind of dip inside this red rectangle very, very closely. So we did come down to these levels and then a big spike here, 8.8%. So it's going to be very interesting for us to see whether the VIX can spike even more and that can result in the markets to pull back and sell off even further or or, or if it's going to be a little bit of reversal once again. So we'll, we'll get to the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ in just a minute, but crude oil prices with a massive drop, 5.3% back under $78 per barrel. This right here is going to be that support level um, to watch right now, sitting roughly at $76, $77 per barrel. So that right there is going to be that support and resistance, of course, at $81, $82 per share. So this right here is going to be that level uh, to really be paying attention to as a resistance for crude oil. Um, Ethereum, once again, just hovering sideways at around 12, 1300. So not a lot of movement there. Um, and Bitcoin also, you'll notice it just consolidating sideways at, at around 17,000 at the moment. So just mostly trading sideways for the most part. Uh, now talking a little bit about the S&P 500 and something again that we have touched on in our previous videos. I also talked about this during our live stream. Um, you'll notice that S&P 500 actually took down the lows from friday so that's a pretty substantial red candle we are now back below the 200 sma we are now back below uh of course this lower high getting a rejection there this is something again i asked you guys in the live stream right are we going to see a rejection are we going to see a breakout majority of you mentioned a rejection and that's exactly what it seems to be kind of happening right now we are getting a bit of a rejection there this is exactly where we got tagged for that s p 500 and right now just you know, getting rejected and starting to kind of sell off. We also have a little bit of a rising wedge pattern for the S&P 500, which is actually not good news from a technical standpoint. And if you do get that breakdown tomorrow or later this week, um, I actually wouldn't be surprised if the S&P starts rolling over once again. And we do see prices kind of leveling off um, and start to uh, start to come down, unfortunately. Um, and, and, you know, that's where we are. You know, um, and I've mentioned this before, I'm going to say this again, uh, you know, I, I do still believe that there is a possibility, you know, maybe it's a low probability possibility, but there is a possibility that we see the S&P 500 with the new lows um, in 2023, because there's a lot of things, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that are still unresolved, you know, if you don't have a clear picture on inflation, in fact, we've done the math, I've showed you guys the chart. That's about as clear as it gets. It's a bird's eye view, a visual representation of what numbers we need to hit in order for the inflation numbers to come down to the Fed's target at 2% or lower. And it's going to take a lot. It's going to take a lot for us to get down there. Uh, that's number one. We still have an unclear picture. We don't know what's going to happen with inflation. Number two, economic conditions. You know, they are tightening. They are starting to slow down. We are seeing economic growth start to pull back. Of course, with China's COVID policies and the Slow down in production, that's even adding more insult to injury, unfortunately. Um, and what's going to happen with economic growth in the fourth quarter, in the first quarter 23, second quarter 23, first half of 23 is still unclear. We don't know what's going to happen with that either. And then all of that ties together to earnings. You know, what, what, how, how are earnings going to shake out? Good, bad, okay. Again, we don't know for sure. And those are some things. Those are things exactly what I just mentioned are the things that are going to restrain the S&P 500 from pushing higher. You know, if we had a clear picture on those things, I would have mentioned that this is a very small pullback and, you know, nothing, there's nothing wrong with this. And then we're just going to make our way back up and potentially break out to the upside. But the markets are going to find a hard way, uh, a very challenging environment to rally in an environment where those three things are still unresolved, inflation, economic conditions, and earnings. You know, if you don't have any idea on those three things, it's going to be difficult for the markets to rally. It's not impossible, but it's going to be very difficult for the markets to find a way to keep rallying, keep powering through, keep charging through. And, and today wasn't like a day where we had like, 
you know, some insane catalysts come in. Sure, factory orders, ISM manufacturing index came in harder than expectations. But of course, the media is just looking for a narrative. Like they're trying to make sense of why the markets are selling off. You know, it, for me, for, for the news media and everybody else, it doesn't make sense for them to not attach a catalyst with the market. You know, every day we want to know, as humans, we want to know the reason behind why something's pushing higher or lower. But a lot of times markets can move on no catalyst. They can go up or down on literally no news. We don't need a reason, you know? The simple reason we need to know is the macroeconomics and the valuations. And unfortunately, those things for the S&P 500 are just not pointing to a significant rally. So uh, all I'm gonna say is just be careful. You know, something that we have plotted before is the, the comparison between the volatility and of course the S&P 500. You know, we're still at that higher low and the S&P is still at that lower high. So we're pretty much in tandem with both of these charts where the S&P is tagging onto a resistance, volatility is tagging onto a support. And of course, a flip back on either of those is going to mean that the other one's also going to start to move in the opposite direction. Something to keep in mind. Uh, and of course, long trades over here are going to be quite, um, quite uh, not that compelling. Like the risk reward is not going to be that great in my personal view. Talking a little bit about the NASDAQ now, and NASDAQ also starting to rotate back down, support level 11,220. So this right here um, is a level that we have been paying attention to. That's the level that we've been watching. So right now that is gonna be that support level, resistance all the way up to that 200 SMA at 12,000 uh, points for the NASDAQ. Um, we still may get up, to that, get up to that level, but really the big culprit here is Tesla. Tesla is really dragging on the entire market. And Tesla being down 6%, you know, is, is definitely a big weighting within the S&P, within the NASDAQ. And of course, it's one of the reasons why the markets are not able to do uh, what they do best, uh, and that is push higher. So uh, I'll do a more separate, more dedicated video on Tesla very soon. But talking a little bit about Apple first. Um, and Apple here, uh, just again, consolidating sideways. You know, we, we still have uh, a resistance and the moving average is sitting roughly in the 150s. So 153, 155, some of those levels to watch for Apple. And of course, support level is going to stay put at 137 um, and my fair value in the 120s for Apple at the moment. Amazon here selling off, now starting to break down from the symmetrical triangle. So you'll notice that we were kind of coiling inside this lower high and the higher low. So this right here was the entire channel. And now we're starting to break down for Amazon further. And the next support, unfortunately, is going to be in the low 80s for this company moving forward. Talking about Tesla and Tesla here down over 6%. And again, I'll be doing a more separate, more dedicated, detailed video on Tesla very soon here. It's been a while, so I need to uh, kind of get my thoughts out uh, for Tesla as well. So 180, 182, 183 is going to be that support level. So this is a level that we have been talking about for quite some time, all the way down to low 167, all the way down to low 150s. I think Tesla 150 is still a possibility. And again, I'm not I'm not saying this because you know I'm bearish on Tesla or like I don't like Tesla or I don't want Tesla to succeed or anything like that. No, I'm just being objective. I am long Tesla. I'm bullish on Tesla. I do like the company very much. But just looking at the technicals, uh, it, it's just a really weak technical stock. You know, it, it's just the sentiment shifted, which I don't think anybody believed that could happen. But look, any stock can go through a really, really bad phase of sentiment and technicals. Any stock, regardless of what it name, like right now, Apple seems like, oh, it's the best stock to own in the market. Apple is only down. Uh, let's see, Apple is only down 17.5%, which is a lot less than the NASDAQ, um, a little bit higher than the S&P, a lot higher than the Dow Jones. But Apple is kind of considered as like a staple, right? Staple stock, right? It's a stock that has great cash flow, great, everything's perfect. You know, even in this environment, it's only down 17%. This is the stock to own. It's just never going to go down. Always think again, even a stock like Apple can eventually get into a situation where the sentiment turns really bearish. And before you know it, it's down 30%, 40% from all time highs. It's possible. Trust me, it is possible for any stock. No stock is immune to all macroeconomic environments, you know? So anything is possible with any name uh, in the market. So uh, Tesla, the sentiments really shifted. Unfortunately, you know, it's turned from being overly bullish to now bearish. Uh, and of course, the technicals, the fact that it's trading below the moving averages, it's making consistent lower highs and lower lows. It's just really poor technicals for a market rally for for this stock's rally so support level next is going to be in the 160s my fair value is in the low 170s for tesla and that's what we're going to be paying attention to right now 
Talking about PayPal, and PayPal was down 1.39%, so still inside the context of this downtrending channel, so we are still making lower highs and lower lows, so this right here is the overall pattern within which PayPal has been trading. Uh, we have you know, broken outside of these ranges a couple times on the downside and on the upside, but for the most part, we're kind of inside this downtrending channel, so lower highs and lower lows, and right now we are at that lower low once again. Uh, PayPal down 1.3%, my fair value in the low 70s for this company. Talking about Square, Square with a brutal drop here, now over 7%, so it's really selling off. Resistance all the way up to $76, $77, and support level is going to stay put in the low 50s for, for Square moving forward. So those right there are going to be some levels to pay attention to for this. Uh, talking a little bit about NVIDIA, and NVIDIA here holding up a lot better than some of the other names. NVIDIA and AMD, like semiconductors overall, did a lot better job today versus some of the other sectors, right? So if you come over to uh, this right here, you'll notice that TSMC was actually up. TS Texture Instruments only down 15 basis points. NVIDIA down 1.5, Qualcomm down 1.8, AMD down 1.8, Broadcom down 1.8. So semiconductors overall held up much better than the overall market and of course their individual uh, peers as well. So NVIDIA, for example, only down one and a half percent trading as low as 166. This still scares me a little bit. There is a negative divergence forming uh, and we've got that 200 SMA center with lead 176. So I would be very, very careful with NVIDIA moving forward. AMD here also consolidating sideways for the most part. RSI and MACD do look a little bit overextended, starting to rotate back down. Support level is going to stay about at $71, $72 for AMD. So that is going to be that level to watch at the moment and of course if we do end up breaking down um, i wouldn't be surprised if amd once again comes down in the mid 60s low 60s my fair value is going to be actually in low 50s for advanced spiker devices talking about meta and meta on the day was only down 86 basis points so not as much as once again the market or its peers um but uh, 122 is where we're at 138 is going to be that next resistance level um, to pay attention to that's the next target and right now we are seeing a decent breakout from this uh, descending triangle for Meta right now. Talking a little bit about Netflix and Netflix also dropping. This is the overall sort of rising wedge pattern that we have talked about for Netflix as well in the past. This right here, higher highs and higher lows. We're kind of consistently trading inside this range uh, for Netflix at the moment. And if you do end up selling off, I would be uh, looking at the support at around 294 to as low as 295 for Netflix to, to kind of come down inside this rising wedge pattern. That's the higher low for this stock. Talking a little bit about Google and Google also kind of consolidating sideways. So only down 1% uh, trading now back under $100 uh, still in the context of this inverted head and shoulders. So resistance all the way up to $105. That is going to be that next target for Google um, and support levels going to stay put at close to $90 per share <clears throat> for Google moving forward. So uh, lots of consolidation right now. This is still the inverse inverted head and shoulders and uh, right now that resistance at 105 support at 90 bucks talking a little bit about microsoft now and microsoft on the day also consolidating sideways only down about 1.89 percent uh trading as low as 250 dollars and my fair value is in the low 200s support level is going to stay put at 240 and resistance all the way up to 263 for microsoft and finally, Shopify also selling off a little bit over 5%, back over, back under its 200 simple moving average, back under this resistance as well for Shopify, which is right around at $40, $41 per share. So right now we're just kind of hanging on over 40 bucks, uh, but Shopify also um, is inside sort of like this higher high and higher low pattern where we are continuing to kind of uh, tag along to those levels very, very nicely. So... Bottom line is the markets are in a very, very indecisive phase. Like I said, this is a very, very important technical resistance to pay attention to on the S&P that's sitting roughly at that lower high. That's the trend line I showed you guys. And as we kind of hit that level, the volatility comes down to a really, really low level. It's, it's really important for us to stay cautious, not go crazy and not take the bait on any type of market rallies based on sentiment. If economic conditions improve, if actual data suggest that inflation is coming down and the Federal Reserve is going to pull back if they actually give us the green light. Uh, I think that's going to be far better in our in our trade to the long side than just trying to anticipate every single month uh, as what the markets have done, because it's like a vicious cycle of anticipation and disappointment. 
and nothing good comes out of that. So thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate it. Make sure that you drop a like. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget 16% discount for Discord, still available uh, for a limited time. And that is going to be that second link down below and a 60% discount for the bundle Fundamental and Technical Analysis Courses. It's the first thing down in the description below. Coupon code CHRISTMAS60. As always, happy investing. I'll see you guys in the next video.